Hi everyone. Welcome back to week five, chapter five of the Adorned Book Club. Today we are going to go through chapter five called Revival of Reverence. And I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, the underscore, the undertitle is called Living in Sacred Service. Um, and the very first quote in the chapter is this. This older woman sees life, all of life, from God's viewpoint and understands that even the mundane routines of life are important to God. Watch her walk through her day in order to see what is next to God's heart. Her life revolves around things that matter to him. Rochelle Fleming. So it's basically a chapter about how the way you act and the way you carry yourself and the, what you um, involve yourself in day to day is being watched and it is how you come across to the world and before we even dive into it i just want to say there is always a an idea of legalism of oh well if i act a certain way then i'm being legalistic and um, this is legalistic and it's in your own strength and if you're a believer in christ this is your life is not um in your own strength and the more you call out to Christ and ask him to help you through the power of his Holy Spirit to live and act in a way that he wants you to, that is not legalism. That is glorifying to God. So I just want to be clear. This is kind of a to-do chapter, but it isn't legalism. It's all about your heart attitude and like the goal that you have with your life in Christ. I think if you are a Christian, not I think, I know, if you're, if you're a Christian, like the end goal is holiness, right? When we get to heaven, we're holy. And towards that path, um, the big word is sanctification. We are being sanctified day by day as we grow in him and as we spend time in his word and as we pray and we talk to him and we learn through the experiences that he allows us to go through. This is called sanctification, meaning being perfected until the day of Christ Jesus, okay? So, Let's just start with that whole premise of this is a way that God wants us to walk and are we doing it and are we doing it in his power? So um, she talks about a sacred existence. So she's drawing this from older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior from Titus 2. So what does that mean and what difference should it make in our day-to-day -day lives? And I just really love this breaking it down so it says um one uh, new living translation is to live in a way that is appropriate for someone serving the lord to be reverent and devout in our deportment as becomes those engaged in sacred service um i love thinking about everything that i do being sacred um about me being a priest who is serving my family um, the, the living word of God. I don't mean that in a sacrilegious way. I just mean every single thing that I do, whether I am, you know, cleaning up poop or laundry or cooking a meal, it is sacred service. The daily life that we involve ourselves in is sacred. And we often, even she says she talks to a young mom and, and she says it doesn't feel holy. All the things that I'm doing all day don't feel holy. But it doesn't mean that it isn't. And so as we look at our life and see what we are doing as sacred, it just changes everything. And it gives me personally the hope and the, the purpose that I need for my day-to-day -day life. So wherever we are at this moment is a sacred place and whatever he has given to us is sacred service. That means, and then she lists all different kinds of job, wife, mom, um, working outside the home. If you're a student, if you're retired, all of these things have opportunity to live as in sacred service. And so if we are living our lives in sacred service, what does this look like as a Titus II woman? So it isn't something that we can turn off and on. Are you the same in church as you are behind closed doors? Are you making choices in your moment to moment, day by day, that reflect godliness, holiness, reverence, and sacred service? Um, and then I'm just going to skip closer. Um, she talks about Anna serving in the temple. Um, 
But here's a question, and I, I'm not sure, maybe this will kind of decide for you. What, does this kind of woman appeal to you? Would she fit well in among your circle of friends? Would they admire her brand of perpetual reverence and want to be like her? Or would they object, be the object of condescending comments and rolled eyes like she's just a little too serious about her faith? It's a good question for me, actually. I, I thought, had to think long and hard about that. So she talks about how in this day and age, as Christian women, we have become a little bit flippant. We like to use curse words. We like to, you know, be a little bit gritty um, and say all is grace, which all is grace. But how can we be acting with reverence and fear of the Lord as women to show the world that we are different? to examine lifestyles and consecrated thinking, to honor God-honoring friendships, to sanctified habits and topics of discussion, to everyday choices that reflect our relationship with this one we revere. That is kind of the how-to. And it doesn't matter what age you are, young, old, we, this is what we should be striving for as we talked about for the last couple weeks. We are models, remember, for our daughters, our granddaughters, and other young women we influence. And they desperately need models of reverent living. What they don't see enough of, what they are suffering from lack of, are mature women who have been with Jesus, what one Bible commentator has described as life in the presence of the holy. So it says young women might laugh out loud and be irreverent, but they, and they may be enamored of popular trends, but deep down, they desire to be rescued from the trivial identities that are experiencing as a result. So it talks then about everyday reverence. What does that look like? What does that feel like in our day-to-day, moment-by-moment days, our everyday actions? All of the different um, modesty, reverent in appearance, and I'm not even going to say anything about rules or their, yeah, um, but what I did like is this, a woman's physical appearance is only part of who she is and not the primary part. So she doesn't need to put excessive energy into adorning her external self. She has more important forms of adornment to focus on. So let's at least say that godly reverence should inspire each of us to personal standards of respect and re reserve and respectability. And then this, this is the big question. And I want us all to think about this, me included. Does our appearance draw to ourselves? Does it distract others from being drawn to Christ? Or does it cause them to be attracted to him? Again, this is not a legalism thing. This is not a, um, you know, rules. And this is not that modesty talk that happened in the 1990s and early 2000s that, you know, happened at church. That, this is not that. This is saying, are you, when you're putting yourself together, are you thinking, man, I am going to look good for my own benefit, or am I going to look lovely? And what's really going to shine through is my countenance to point others to the Lord. Because there's nothing wrong with doing your hair. There's nothing wrong with makeup. There's nothing wrong with nice clothes. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. But what are we pointing to? Are we obsessing with how this looks on the outside, are we obsessing with what's in here and what comes out of our eyes and our and our mouth? Um, so then, so in our lifestyle as well. So where reverence begins is in the quiet moments. It begins in the mornings when we get up and spend quiet time with the Lord and pray throughout the day and listen to worship music and constantly meditate on his words and we think before we speak. I posted on Instagram earlier this week that, you know, I we had company coming and I lost my temper at my kids and I had to go back and ask for forgiveness and I'm just so thankful for grace. This isn't a lifestyle of perfection. This is a lifestyle of always we begin again. Always we we have this idea in our mind that God is continually sanctifying us and we are not going to be done until we get to heaven, but that doesn't mean we just give up. So we are, this is what Paul calls us to be in Titus 2, reverent in behavior, reverent in worship, 
reverent in lifestyle, reverent in what we read and listen to and how we entertain ourselves, reverent in where we go, what we do, and who we admire, reverent in what we wear and what we love, what we say and what we don't say, reverent in a way that adorns our lives and the doctrine of Christ, reverent all the time, not just because God's cameras are rolling, but because he is worthy of our wholehearted devotion and obedience, because he has made pleasing him the most pleasurable life on earth. And so today I'm not going to read the questions in the back because I feel like I have enough of my own. What do you think about this? Do you think this does sound legalistic? Do you think that being reverent in behavior sounds super boring? Do you, or do you truly think that walking with God each and every day is a pleasurable thing? And are you choosing to be reverent in your behavior, in your dress, in your actions, in your words, and who you spend time with? and what you watch and what you listen to. I need to think a lot about these things, so I don't have it all figured out, but um, that is what this study is for, to press further up, higher up and further in. So I'm praying for you this week. Sorry to leave you with kind of a, well, there you go, um, because I don't have it all figured out, but I do want, really want to be that person who is reverent in behavior. And when you meet me, I want you to know that I am Christ, not in a judgy way, but in a God loves me so much and he is flowing out of me onto you. That is my goal for every person who meets me. And not that, not that it would be manufactured, but that it would truly be his love and I would just be the conduit. And how we, how we portray him to the world is by being reverent. And it is slightly, it feels slightly old fashioned in our current Christian women culture. So I'd love to hear from you and hear what you think. And I will see you next time. Have a great day and God bless you. Bye.